Here's what's coming up in the Category5.tv newsroom. Hey Windows users, are you still using Internet Explorer? Stop it. There's yet another zero-day exploit that will give hackers the ability to remotely take over your computer. Pine 64's $200 pro-grade Linux laptop is now available with a US keyboard and customers who pre-ordered theirs are receiving the first shipment now. Secu a security shocker out of Microsoft as it has been revealed that 250 million customer records have been exposed online. And not to create false hope, but this is too huge not to mention. Scientists at Cardiff University have discovered a part of our immune system that can kill prostate, breast, lung, and other cancers in lab, in lab tests. Stick around. The full details are coming up later in the show. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. I'm Sasha Rickman, joined this week by Jeff Weston and Robbie Ferguson. All right, some quick honorable mentions this week, or at least one. Hey, you ready for this? Patrick Stewart appeared on The View this week wow. and personally invited host Whoopi Goldberg to appear in the second season of Star Trek Picard. Make it so. Yes, sir. While promoting the premiere of the Picard series, Stewart surprised Goldberg, saying, quote, I'm here with a formal... Uh, <clears throat> I'm here with a formal invitation. It's for you, Whoopi. Well, for me. Um, Alex Kurtzman, who is the senior executive producer of Star Trek Picard, oh. and all of his oh. colleagues, of which I am one, want to invite you into the second season. Oh. Stewart's invitation was met with a big smile from Whoopi, who played the beloved and timeless Guinan character in Star Trek The Next Generation. Since the, uh, well, as soon as the applause from the studio audience subsided and following a warm hug between the two actors, Whoopi responded enthusiastically saying, yes. Good. Season two of Star Trek Picard was already confirmed a month before the first season even began airing. Wow. Other confirmed TNG alumni are Jonathan Frakes as William Riker, Marina Sirtis as Deanna Troy, Brent Spiner as Data, a.k.a. B4. And I must say, Brent, we love you. And Jonathan Del Arco as Hugh of Borg. Also along for the show is Star Trek Voyager's Jerry Ryan as wow. Seven of Nine. Star Trek Picard is available as of January 23rd in Canada and the U.S. and the very next day, worldwide. Nice. Let's get into the top stories we're following this week. Microsoft set, sent out an advisory on Friday detailing an under, an under attack zero day vulnerability for Internet Explorer. The scripting engine flaw can be exploited to gain remote code execution of a vulnerable machine by way of specifically crafted a specifically crafted web page. While this particular flaw can be mitigated by restricting access to the JavaScript component jscript.dll, there is no patch available to actually fix the vulnerability. Even if Microsoft is swift to create a patch, they plan to release it on an upcoming Patch Tuesday. Since we know that's the second Tuesday of each month, they're leaving this takeover exploit active in the wild for a good four weeks or so at least. These kinds of horrendous security practices are another reminder of why we shouldn't be trusting Microsoft to provide our antivirus too. There is no practical reason to be running Internet Explorer these days. If you must use Microsoft Windows, download Chrome, Firefox, or better yet, get the Brave private what excuse me, private browser from cat5.tv slash brave to automatically block ads while you surf the web. It's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Microsoft has been continually letting us down. Windows 10 has been a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Has Microsoft ever not let us down? I mean, maybe back like Windows 93, 95? We can say that, but I mean, it, it, it felt like ago. they... No, it did feel like they were giving it an effort back at, then. at one point. Yeah. I mean, they had the beta team. They had um, the, the testing team before patches went out. and But stuff like this and having to wait four weeks yes, for so an crazy. actively exploited 
issue That's the thing. that is a takeover bug. Mm -hmm. Like this is something that could completely compromise an entire network of machines. And so if somebody, uh, a miscreant knows of the vulnerability within, let's say, a, a business network mm -hmm. and actively exploits it because it is like, understand, folks. This is an exploit that is currently being used by hackers to infiltrate networks. Mm -hmm. right. It is currently being used. So if that's the case, wouldn't it be prudent for a company like Microsoft to say, we need to fix this and we need to fix this now? now? Yes. Instead of waiting a month. <laughs> At least. At least four weeks. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking the, the second tuesday of february why four weeks though like why that's that's arbitrary it's just the second tuesday of every month why? is when they issue their patches yeah. well, I, I get now? that but yeah why not push through an update because they don't because it's it, the rollout happens on on that schedule they this is the thing they've set they've set themselves up yeah. for this type of failure See, I think, their infrastructure is set up for this type of failure now. But I don't know why they couldn't even just post it to their website and say, update manually. <sighs> like, nobody's going to do it. But if no, you, you unless you know, unless it, it even if for a million years, but even if you know that that patch exists, imagine if you had 100 computers mm -hmm. and you had to manually go like yeah. the whole Windows infrastructure right now is a brutal nightmare. That's true. It's just ridiculous, and it, and it's really causing companies, especially companies that are currently stuck on Windows, like that have Windows Seven machines intermixed in their network. A lot of government right. agencies. Yeah, a lot of government agencies. And we're looking at, okay, well, what do we do next? Do we buy all new systems so we can install Windows Ten, because that's usually necessary unless you can maybe put more ram in them because you're going to need at least like twice as much ram you're going to need uh an ssd to you know make it you know, like you're going to need to upgrade you're not going to be using a five-year-old computer for windows 10 that's for sure no uh at least not without a couple of little upgrades so you know we look at that and then we say okay well what other options are there and these are things that we're going to be talking about here on the show but it really just makes you go Wow. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let's back up a second and say, what's really, you know, what's, what's happening here? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a wake up call too to say, maybe Microsoft has got way too much control over our corporation. I've been saying that for yeah. decades. And a lot of people have. <laughs> and I don't, and I'm not even saying that out of my Linux bias that we call it here. I'm saying that out of the reality of this is actually happening right now. There is this active threat that is being exploited and Microsoft is not doing a darn thing about it until the next Patch Tuesday. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And is Microsoft not vying for like some special government contract for something cloud related right now? You're talking like you know something, but you're not actually saying something. I've, I, I feel like we've been <laughs> hearing about like there's... Um, the the U.S. government's looking to go cloud or something, and I, like With Amazon, Azure? like Amazon was in on it. And there's a bunch of different companies. I thought Microsoft was in on it as well. Well, there's only the three big ones. Well, yeah, but I mean, I'm thinking about stuff like this. It's like if you're doing a push every four weeks, if I'm vying for a government contract to create something new, you think you'd want to have a better business model? Well, like. Yeah, I'm not even yeah. touching on that, like the business end of things. I'm talking like the but end user impacts, end of things. Right. This impacts all it of it. It should. It should make the governments grow, like wise up and say, maybe there are more secure options out there. Yep. Maybe there are better options out there. And that, that, my dear friends, is where my Linux bias comes in. That's right. It's true. <laughs> well, and speaking of Linux. Yes, this is a great story. Are you ready for this? Here we go. Pine64's $200 pro-grade Linux laptop is now available with a U.S. keyboard, and customers who pre-ordered theirs are receiving the first shipment now. Nice. The Pinebook Pro ships with a customized version of Debian pre-installed. That's right. This is a true Linux laptop. It also has a few other tricks up its sleeve, like a bootable micro SD card slot so that you can easily run another operating system off a cheap memory card whenever you feel like it. 
Just about all laptop all laptop computers use Intel processors these days. Only a very small percentage of Windows laptops have started using Qualcomm ARM processors. The Pinebook Pro actually uses a 64-bit ARM processor called the Rockchip RK3399 with a Mali T860 MP4 GPU, which is made by the same company that makes the Pinebook Pro, Pine Microsystems Inc. Pine also makes other computing hardware such as compute modules and single board computers that you can build into other projects. And as Robbie mentioned last week, they're even, they even bring a cheap privacy focused smartphone to market that runs Linux natively. The Pinebook Pro includes four gigabytes of RAM, which is the maximum supported by the Rock chip, so it's not upgradable. By default, it also includes a 64 gigabyte EMC storage module, which you can upgrade if you want. But as Westerners, the biggest problem we had with the original Pinebook and even the first run of Pinebook Pro was the keyboard. There's just no way to get reviewers or in, end users in Canada or the US to truly love an ISO keyboard, which is a layout more familiar to users in the UK. But now, as of last week, users who pre-ordered are receiving their ANSI keyboard Pinebook Pros. ANSI is more commonly called the US keyboard layout. So for $200, Linux fans can get a solid, professional, and super sleek laptop that has keys where they expect them. So how can a Pine64 sell such a fine piece of kit for only $200? because they love you, that's why. Actually, that's not even sarcasm. The Pinebook Pro is being sold at cost as a gift to the open source loving community, so it's not technically meant for regular users. If you believe in freedom and like to tinker and learn about technology, the Pinebook Pro is meant for you. This is awesome. I said it last week with no words, but Pine64. Yeah. This is so good. I like it. Yeah. Now, when people first purchased the original Pine Books and the Pine Book Pros, did they know it was coming with the alternate keyboard, or were they expecting the a Pine US Book style? Pro? Yes, the Pine Book never did. The okay. Pine Book came with the ISO keyboard. That's what it came with. And we right. were when we reviewed it here on the show. You remember, like it was right. like I can't get my head around this thing. And for those of you who live in the UK and places where the ISO keyboard is standard, <laughs> like, what are you talking? You're like, about? this is great. This is fantastic. But no, when you're used to an American layout, it's completely different, and it seems completely whacked. I mean, <laughs> I've seen reviews online, and and I, I'm part of that where it's like I just can't get my head around the ISO keyboard layout. My keyboard is a French layout, and Robbie doesn't even oh, like it. Oh my goodness! So. Yeah, I mean we're here in Canada, <laughs> up here in Studio T, and government. I don't know if it's legislation or what says that things have to be French and English combined so if you walk into a super center and buy a laptop it's yeah. a french english keyboard and keys are all over the place yeah and so even when i was setting it up with with cloud ready it was like i was pushing the wrong keys yeah i just uh, because <laughs> that's how i always type just pushing the wrong keys. <laughs> <laughs> so i've never noticed a difference in keyboard to be honest Maybe you've just never had to experience that. Right. But, well, I, I guess, but I mean, we're like... We're not connoisseurs of fine keyboards. Well, every keyboard I use, like, <laughs> I, I recognize that they're all going to be different, so I just roll with it. But I suppose what happens is that they don't all have to be different, and do you, that's... Do you touch type? Like, do you type 180 words a minute, like Robbie? Like 180? If it's... Are you if, a cyborg, my if friend? It's out of the, if it's out of place, I am going to push the wrong keys. Because the keys are meant to be where my fingers are trained to know that they are. I, I could Sasha like was 60? commenting before the show. He is like magic. Before the show, I was, was doing like, this on your key. What, and you're like. Yeah, he's like, what's your password? Because he needed it to get into my And life. it's like all this, like, and all so characters I, and uppercase, like lowercase. one of and, those suggest a strong password passwords yeah, yeah. that's like this long. And, and like, it bloop, has bloop. symbols that I didn't even know the name of. One yeah. of them is a tilde. Tilde, yeah. Um, anyway. Which so on a I French just, keyboard, incidentally, is in the wrong room and place. So I just show. Robbie my phone and he was just like -a -a -a, looking at the phone yeah. just typing for a minute that's how it know. works right Done. on a French keyboard too yeah. 
So I added a slash at the end there because that's where the enter key ah. is supposed to be. So, yeah, knowing that now an so, ANSI keyboard is available, which is the U.S. layout, exactly. I'm very excited about I that. I really appreciate, too, that they're selling it at cost. Yeah. To me, it feels like a big hug. Like, it's a, it's just a nice Surely. thing to know that a company cares that much. And at Pine64, I've always felt, cares about, respects, and is even a part of that open source community mm -hmm. yes. and there's a mindset there's like a spirit about the open source community the true open source community not the there there's kind of two facets of it there's the the angry like if you use windows you are the devil side of open source and yeah. then there's the side that just really loves freedom and really loves community support and yes. giving help to people and becoming part of communities and becoming part of online forums and helping other people like there's that aspect and that's the aspect that i really feel pine 64 really falls into mm -hmm. and so to offer yeah something like the pine book pro which is a beautiful notebook computer in two different models now I know. for awesome. iso and ansi so they heard the call of the reviewers mm -hmm. here in canada and the u.s yes and they're offering it at cost for 200 bucks so that's Damn, awesome that is what great. so for the cost of a premium chromebook you're getting a uh, uh, computer that you can just slap Linux on. It comes with Linux. Yep. It's got more power. It's got a lot of oomph. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really, really keen and excited about the Pinebook Pro. So cool. well done, Pine64, and to the community at Pine64. I mean, we love you here at Category 5. Yes, we do. And uh, certainly appreciate the entire team. So thank you for all that yes. you do. We've got to take a quick break. More of our this week's top tech news stories are coming up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. A security shocker out of Microsoft as it has been revealed that 250 million customer records have been exposed online. I feel like this is a face palm moment. We really don't intend for the news to be all about Microsoft, but this week has been a doozy. There's the Internet Explorer zero-day vulnerability that's being actively exploited, yet Microsoft has, hasn't has issued a patch for. That revelation came just days after the U.S. government issued a critical alert to Windows users concerning the extraordinarily serious curveball crypto vulnerability. And now this, 250 million Microsoft customer records spanning an incredible 14 years in all have been exposed online in a database with no password protection. Wow. The data was accessible to anyone with a web browser who stumbled across the databases. According to the report issued by the security researcher team at Comparatech, no authentication at all was required to access them. The nature of the data appears to be that, mu that much of the personally identifiable information that was redacted. However, the researchers say that many contain plain text data, including customer email addresses, IP addresses, geographical locations, descriptions of the customer service and support claims, cases, Microsoft support agent emails, case numbers and resolutions, and internal notes that had been marked as confidential. Hmm. While this may seem like no big deal considering the number of breaches, many of which affecting even more users. The thing to consider here is that Microsoft support scams are already rampant, and it doesn't take a genius to work out how valuable actual customer information could be to the fraudsters carrying out such attacks. And it puts users at a severe disadvantage and risk of being exploited by someone pretending to be the very company they trust. Microsoft Security Response Center posted a response dated January 22nd, 2020. In that post, they confirmed that the exposure of the database started on December 5th, 2019 as a result of misconfigured security rules and was fixed on December 31st. 
It's not known at this point if the databases were accessed, but it seems very, very likely. Since White Hat security researchers picked up on the issue and even replicated its data to their own servers, it's very likely bad actors also got their hands on it. <sighs> very, just yet another. Yeah. Yeah. Just another. It's can, what is going on at like, Microsoft? Well, yeah. yeah, I'm sitting here going like, what do you say? It's like. Yeah. <sighs> it's that's a disheartening story so i guess what it comes down to is the, the only thing we can say i mean uh, sure you're face palming i'm disgusted mm -hmm. you as as potential victims need to understand that you just need to be very very conscious that this has happened mm -hmm. yep. you have to be very conscious that phishing scams and now spear phishing scams exist. So yeah. these are now, they have your information. You have a Microsoft account, right? You've contacted their support or activated software. So now somebody can call you and say, I'm calling from Microsoft and uh, I've got yeah, your case number here and blah, blah, blah. And I've got enough evidence on this piece of paper to be able to prove to you that I am who right. I say I am. Right. Yeah. Just like the last time we spoke when we mm -hmm. offered you this and this and yeah. this. Remember I'm, that? Yeah. Yeah. Remember the time that you called just a couple of weeks ago and we talked about this and that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, we just found out that there's another exploit. And so I need to remote into your computer to fix that for you. Exactly. So all of a sudden there's this Okay, wait, 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 hold up. So here's what you need to do. Hang up the phone. Yes. Okay. Microsoft does not phone its users. Mm -hmm. Microsoft will not offer you support. That's not the industry that they are in. That's right. That's not how they work. Mm -hmm. And so just understand that. And maybe if you just at least are, at least make yourself critical enough to be able to say, Microsoft does not offer this service. Mm -hmm. If you can just say that to yourself, then maybe that's enough to protect you so that when that call comes in or when that email comes in, that you just don't click it. I remember right. last week we learned as well. Last week we learned that a new form of cookie attack is allowing um, hackers to compromise PayPal accounts just by you clicking on a link that takes you to a site that creates the session. And then you can close that and come back to it two weeks later and log into the legitimate paypal.com website and boom, they've got your information. So we yep. know that if you just fall for it enough to click the link, they could have put something on your computer yeah. that's enough to get you next time. So even if you don't fall for it this time, maybe you click the link and you don't give them your information, but you mm -hmm. clicked the link. Don't click the link. Right. Stop yourself at that point and realize Microsoft doesn't offer this service. I am not going to click a link in an email that says log into my Microsoft account or any Microsoft service. So yeah. understand that's Office 365. That's Exchange. That's that's your um, like your um, what is it? Microsoft Online, even services, Xbox, whatever Xbox like, 360 Online or whatever. All, all that know, stuff. Xbox Online. Yeah, all that stuff. Uh, Microsoft Online account for for your Minecraft and, and like all these things. Mm hmm. You're compromised. Yep. So don't trust anything that comes in now. Period. Yes. And that, that's, that's, a, that's a blanket statement. Don't trust anything now. You have to decide. You have to go to your bank website and log in correctly. Mm -hmm. You don't yep. ever, don't ever click a link that takes you there. Never. Never. Don't Google it. Don't search it in Bing. Don't, don't type it in the search. Don't mm -hmm. type your bank's name in the search and click the first link on the results. No, you type in oh, your... Do people do that? Do people, people do, do that. that. Oh, yeah. And those same hurts. people get compromised. So, wow. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on to All better right. news. <laughs> not to create false hope, but this is too huge not to mention. Scientists at Cardiff University have discovered a part of our immune system that can kill prostate, breast, lung, and other cancers in lab tests. The findings published in Nature Immunology have not yet been tested in patients, but the researchers say that they have enormous potential. 
Experts are saying that although the work was still at an early stage, it is very exciting. Our immune system is our body's natural defense against infection, but it also attacks cancerous cells. The scientists were looking for unconventional and previously undiscovered ways the immune system naturally attacks tumors. What they found was a T cell inside people's blood. This is an immune cell that can scan the body to assess whether there is a threat that needs to be eliminated. The difference is that the one in particular that they discovered can seemingly attack a wide range of cancers. Researcher Professor Andrew Sewell says, quote, there is a chance to treat every patient. Previously, nobody believed this could be possible. It raises the prospect of a one-size-fits-all cancer treatment, a single type of T-cell that could be capable of destroying many different types of cancers across the population, end quote. The discovered T-cell was able to kill a wide range of cancerous cells in, in the lab, including lung, skin, blood, colon, breast, bone, prostate, ovarian, kidney, and cervical cancer cells. Wow. Crucially, it left normal tissues untouched. Exactly how it does all this is still being explored. The idea is that a blood sample would be taken from a cancer patient. The T cells in the sample would be extracted and genetically modified so that they were they were reprogrammed to make the cancer-finding receptor. The upgraded cells would be grown in vast quantities in the laboratory and then put back into the patient. Daniel Davis, a professor of immunology at the University of Manchester, said, quote, at the moment, this is very basic research and not close for to actual medicines for patients. There is no question that is a very exciting discovery, both for advancing our basic knowledge about the immune system and the possibility of future new medicines, end quote. More safety checks will be needed before human trials can begin. Wow. I like this. This isn't yeah. necessarily a tech story, but it's a human interest story yes. that is here because of tech. Sure. Yes. The yeah. advancements that we have made in science to be able to get to the point where it's like, what else is there? Mm -hmm. Let's explore the body even further. Let's alter this cell and see what happens. Yes. And boom, suddenly we're going, is this it? That is so cool. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is right now, cancer treatments are just, they seem so barbaric barrack right now they're life-saving but they're super intrusive so yeah. i mean you know the chemotherapy surgery the things that that are just really radiation things that are really detrimental to the human human body just to keep it alive if yeah. you can have an immune response against cancer that that just annihilates any trace of it i just cannot wait i don't know see. like does anyone else feel that like excitement and the anticipation like could it be like could that be yeah. possible and from what sure. i understand all they're doing is taking the t-cell that you already produce out and they're just replicating it like they're kind of growing more well, they're, al the they're altering it to put in the receptor to find the cancer cells mm -hmm. yeah the, so that's a bit cancer, of a yeah. genetic yeah. modification yeah. and then they're and then culturing more so there can't be adverse reactions because it's your own. Sure. Well, there could, I mean, there could, I, I don't, don't under, I don't understand the I science. I can't yeah. pretend to understand Sounds the science, good. but I know there was a time in our history when, um, penicillin didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when, and when it was discovered, if you will, no, it was and, a mistake. Yeah. But so, yeah. When penicillin it was, was an accident. But then, so when it was accidentally discovered, how earth shatteringly, like how many lives were saved? How many yes. lives were improved because of it? It's you know what? I was having a conversation with one of my clients the other day and her older siblings were born before penicillin. Oh and wow. She said the reason I'm not deaf is because penicillin existed oh, wow. for me and not for my brothers. Oh, wow. Right? So it's heartbreaking right? and yet at the same time it's like it's awesome. the dawn of a new era. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's very cool. So are we at that point with cancer? I don't think we are, but, but I'm so hopeful. Close. I'm like, I'm so hopeful in humanity and, and our, 
our ability to accomplish that because I just want that. Yeah. That's a good news story. Yeah. <laughs> Big thanks to Roy W. Nash, Che Cobb, and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category5.tv newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patreon.com slash newsroom. From the Category5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman. And I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Jeff Weston.